Hello, everybody. I am super excited to be here today. My name is Rob Rettman. I'm with DotFit, and uh, I, I, I get the pleasure of being able to spend some time with uh, industry icon, uh, the founder of 24 Hour Fitness, founder and chairman of New Evolutions Venture. Uh, he's, he's actually on the ownership group with the Sacramento Kings. And, and, and Mark, I know there's so many more things I could say, but I, I, I've gotten to know you a little bit more. And I know that, you know, uh, enough is enough and, and we're going to dive into some of these things but so excited to be able to spend uh, about 45 minutes here with none other than Mark Mastron. So Mark, thank you so much for being on with us today. I greatly appreciate it. Hey Rob, I, pre I appreciate you having me. I'm looking forward to the next 45 minutes so we can dig in and uh, tell some stories, have some fun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, so Mark, I I've heard you tell some of this before and what I'd like to do is dive back into like you know, one of the people, again, that, that really changed our entire industry with, with what you did. So what I'd like to know first is what got you into just the gym industry? How did that start? I, I just kind of fell into it. I, I, I graduated from college. I, I'd hurt my knee playing ball in college and had surgery, rehabbed it. And I always remember the rehab people told me that I'm going to need to keep my leg in shape and lift weights and keep my quad strong, my knee strong. So after I graduated, I didn't have access to the facilities at the school anymore. So I went to look for a little gym near my home where I was living at the time. Turned out a kid that worked there, I knew I, I went to high school with. So he introduced me to the owner and the owner immediately said, hey, do you want a job? And I had another job. So I said, well, I have another job. But he said, well, look, if you, if you work here at least eight hours a week, I'll give you a free membership. And I didn't have a lot of money. I was like, okay, I'll take that. So free membership sounded good. So I went to work and next thing you know, I was a trainer, didn't have a clue what I was doing. I probably blew out 500 people's backs the first year, training everybody improperly. It was kind of a little bit naive and no one really taught me what to do right. Uh, and I think we can talk about the Neil Spruce and uh, Mike Clark NASM days and how we figured it out finally. But yeah, so I kind of fell into the business working eight hours a week as a trainer and, and uh, in exchange for free membership. Awesome, awesome. So was that... Was that actually 24-hour Nautilus? No, the, it, was a, it was a small gym, uh, 5,000 square feet, and it was called Nautilus Health Spa. Okay. It was just a little gym that a, a guy had built there. Uh, his name was John Prell. Okay. And I basically became a, a trainer there, and he would you know, pay me for my hours, and then I'd pick up four hours on Wednesday nights. I'd pick up four hours on the weekends, and I'd get my eight hours in, and then I had my other job I'd work, and then I'd train there and lift weights and, you know, keep in shape and meet yeah. people and have fun. All right. So how did that transition go then from you saying, you know what, I've, I've kind of got this part-time job and, and being able to work out and doing this to then going, you know what, I want to, I want to do this. And, and with your first acquisition, how did that part go for you to go, this is the industry I think I want to make my, uh, my mark in. Yeah. So even then, I mean, I, I worked, um, you know, a few few hours each week. And then I think maybe a month or two months into it, I, I came in on a Saturday morning to work like an eight to 12 shift. And John came and grabbed me and said, hey, all my sales guys went out last night, got hammered. Nobody's here. Can you sell for me this morning? I go, I don't know how to sell memberships. I don't even know what your pricing or anything is. So he showed me on a piece of paper, just show him this, fill this out. It's really easy. Okay. So I remember, I think we had like seven or eight people come in between eight and 12 that day. And every single person I toured, every single person bought a membership. I put them on paper and then I got ready to leave and at 12 and John came over to me and goes, wait a minute, you, you, you sold seven out of seven. That's amazing. It's the best thing anybody's ever had here. You got to keep selling. I was like, well, I, I got to leave. I'm heading out to some friends. He goes, no, stay another four hours, work four more for me. No one's here. So I remember I worked the rest of the day. I think I went like 15 for 15 that day. And then next thing you know, is he wants me to be a sales guy and I really didn't have any interest in doing it. I had another job. So I would come in and work a few nights and six months went by. And he comes to me and says, look, I'm moving to LA. I'm selling the gym. I think I've enrolled everybody in San Leandro where we grew up here. Everybody basically that wants to buy memberships. Nobody left. Come with me to LA. You're amazing. Come work for me. I was like, ah, I got my girlfriend here. I got my house here. I don't really want to move. I got my other job. He said, all right, well, I figured you'd say that. So I got the guy who's buying the gym. He wants to meet with you because he wants you to work for him. I said, all right, no problem. So I meet with this guy, his name's Gene Heckerman. And Gene basically tells me, look, I want you to be the manager of the gym. I hear you're the best guy here. I was like, look, I don't know how to manage anything. I'm, I just sell a few memberships. I train people, that's it. He's like, well, I hear you're pretty sharp. I'd like you to be the manager and I'll pay you whatever you're paid at your other job. I said, well, I appreciate that, but it's not what I want to do. 
um, you know, I, I got my job. I like my job. I like working here part time. He says, well, what if I made you a partner? And that got my attention. And he said, look, I'll make you a partner, you know, cost you a little bit of money. How about put $15,000 into this gym and I'll make you my partner. Well, I didn't have $15,000. My mom and dad didn't have 15,000, but my grandmother had a little bit of money. So I went to her and she was kind enough to let me borrow $15,000. And I went back to Gene and said, okay, you got a partner. And I quit my other job and I became a gym manager of this little 5,000 square foot gym. Gene's job was to build a software program. He wanted to build a software system. And so we had a programmer come in each night and I would work with this guy on designing a system to understand how to operate a gym, which made me think a lot. And then I would run the gym the rest of the day. And once we got that software built, we created what was at that point a mag stripe system where you could swipe your card in, you know, with your picture on it and enter the gym. No one else had built that and Gene knew how to do it. So we built that system and he focused on that. I focused on running the gym and uh, I could keep going for hours here, but that, that was kind of how I got to where I got to where now I'm a, a small partner in a little 5,000 square foot gym that has designed a software system. In the meantime, uh, I love running the gym. We're making a lot of money. I figured it out. John had not enrolled everybody in San Leandro. Of course, he, he just was off. And I started making more and more money than he'd ever made before. And I love the fact that every day was different. You could do accounting and sales and marketing and janitorial and operations, and you could buy media. You could just do all these things. So it made me um, continue to excel and grow in all aspects of, of running an operation. That is awesome. Hey, so that magic day, though, when you were taking over in the morning and then staying in the afternoon, did anybody ever find out the 15 for 15 was really like every family member that you had called to be like, come down here so I could just sign you up, right? So we so like, you know. saw it was the same person. I just kept re-enrolling them and, you know, <laughs> the system. <laughs> We've never done anything like that before. Never, never. Uh, so, Mark, I, and, and of course, I love too, because uh, I remember back in the day, of course, going into the gym where you would pretty much give your license and they would hold on to it in the little alphabetical box and all that. So it's amazing to see how the technology where you got it, never mind where we are today, right? So, sure. so if you would, then how can you share with us a little bit of how did 24 hour fitness come to be? So I'm sitting there running that gym and you know, I, I take the keys, we open up at five in the morning, we shut at 11 at night. And I don't really trust anybody yet to hand the keys to. So I'm getting up and opening it. I'm staying late and closing it. I'm not sleeping a lot. And I'm starting to realize it's killing my life. Uh, my girlfriend's screaming at me and I'm figuring out I got to do something here. So um, I start recognizing that 11 o'clock at night, I go to close the gym and it's hard to get anybody out of there, especially if it's a female who just got done working out. She goes in the locker room. I can't force her out. So I'd basically throw the keys to my janitorial crew and say, okay, everybody's out, but these three people make sure they get out of here and lock it down. And in the morning, I'll be back at five. And then they start telling me that people are knocking on the door at three or 4 a.m. asking to come in. And I'm like, well, who are these people? And you start to realize you got all these workers that get off at odd hours that want access to work out. And so I said, well, look, maybe the solve for my problem is, is that if I just open around the clock, kind of like 7-Eleven used to kind of eventually go 24 hours a day, I used to say, well, if we could open 24 hours a day, then I could hire somebody to be like a graveyard person. So we had this kid that you probably know named Dave Atencio. Dave was one of my trainers. He was a high school kid just getting ready to go to college. And I hit Dave up and say, would you be interested in working nights? You know, like work, say, 11 uh, p.m. to 7 a.m. He said yes. So Dave became my first graveyard guy. I flipped him the keys. And now I could go home at 9 o'clock at night, not 11 or 12. And I could sleep in in the morning and get to work around nine or 10 and my life changed. And so that whole thing was more of a convenience for me and then turned out to be a convenience for the members. And then it turned out to be something that we used in the world of objections. If you sell, there's always four objections and one of them is time. I don't have enough time to work out. And I would just look them in the face and say, we're open 24 hours a day. How can you not find time to work out? And eliminated objection. Pretty soon you found it as a powerful close and it gave us a marketing advantage and edge. And now we became 24-hour Nautilus Health Spa. That's how it started. And then the smaller company, right, all of a sudden decided to say, we're going to go look at this maybe larger company that's down south. And is that kind of the formation on, on how, you, how you did all that? Well, that's kind of like 10 years later. So we kind of start with that one gym. And what happens is, is that we finish the software development and we go to market. And we start selling software to gyms. And I sell to five or six gyms very quickly. But then I'm finding they're calling me 
daily, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I sell? How do I price? And next thing knows, I'm helping them fix their gyms. And then a couple of them call and say, look, we, we have no money. We're, we're out of cash. We're losing money. We don't know what to do. So we ended up picking up a couple of gyms. Like, well, we'll just take the keys from you then. And so I picked up a couple of gyms or spent a little bit of money off our balance sheet. And we opened gym number two and gym number three. And then we put our systems in place, our people in place. We started making a lot of money. And then I realized I really loved the gyms. I really didn't love selling software and consulting as much. And so Gene and I had a conversation. He said, look, I'll take the software business. You keep the gyms. So he took the software and I took the gyms. And I brought in a partner, Leonard Schlem. And Leonard and I kind of grew the business. He was a very strong financial guy and, and a great guy. He's been my partner ever since, been great friends ever since. And then we headed down that path and we grew from one to three to about 30 locations. It became a pretty strong business in Northern California. And then we went and raised a little bit of capital. And then we uh, went down to Southern California and, and spent time talking to Ray Wilson. I think we had 34 clubs at the time. Ray had like 68. And we made Ray an offer to buy his 68 clubs and we merged the two companies together. And next thing you know is we're a big fitness company now on the West Coast. And we began integrating everything that we knew and everything that Ray knew. And we became fairly formidable you know, when we did that. Just incredible too, because, uh, you know, for, for myself, it was probably around 97. Uh, I, I had already been working for Neil and, and we're going to go there in a little bit, but I'd been working for Neil on the East coast and they actually moved me out to Southern California to help take care of Orange County and LA County specifically for 24 hour fitness. And I got to meet all great people like, you know, um, Michelle Shaw and all the district fitness managers at the time. And, and Mark, just true story. I didn't know what I didn't know. I would go into a club or two clubs every day just talking about Apex, but no real idea of, of all the other club workings because I've been a personal trainer before and helped run Apex programs, you know, the company that preceded Dot Fit for anybody that might be listening. And but I didn't, I didn't know, you know, what is a GM thinking? What is a fitness manager thinking? Are they thinking about the number of appointments they have coming in? Have they confirmed those? Where are we based upon EFT? Where's all those things, right? So then, you know, for me personally, I, I, I kind of, I, I went through a little bit of a time with Apex, with NASM, with Neil and Mike Clark. And then I actually got to work with, you know, somebody that I know was near and dear and close with you, uh, Larry Gurney and Jeff Harmon with the Rush Fitness Complex in 10 years. And let me tell you, it was like the best education ever because it was really filling in a bunch of holes that I just didn't know that I didn't know and learning from, you know, I'm sorry, I'll say, but two of the best. But now when I'm back with Neil for about five years with DotFit and I get to work with, again, some of, uh, if you don't mind me saying, I kind of consider you to be like the Bill Walsh. And then we look at the coaching tree out of all these people that came from family fitness, 24 hour fitness as it evolved. And, you know, to this day, I get to work with, you know, obviously somebody near and dear with you with Jim Rowley, um, Curtis Harmon, Harry Rio, um, Steve Block. And again, the names could go on, but I go, these people are all amazing at what they do because I've never understood how they just have it up here on how to say, you know, this is what we do. This is how we run a successful business. You know, you've got to see results, but you know, the business and all the components have to be there. So now when I get to look back, I go, my gosh, you just had the best of the best at that time and, and how it's all branched off and nowadays into various brands too. Pretty amazing. But, uh, but Mark, I, I've got a question for you because Growing up and spending a lot of time with Larry, and I know that he probably got this from you or Ray Wilson combined together, but, but you guys had created such a, such a competitive atmosphere. And um, I, I hope some people can laugh when I say this, because I mean this in the best way possible, but uh, have you ever seen Wolf of Wall Street by any chance, the movie? I sure. mean, I'm watching some of that and, you know, a little exaggeration, wasn't exactly like that, but boy, it was close even in my rush days. And I mean, there were people that would do anything. And I kind of joke and I say, they give their firstborn to become the next general manager of a location, never mind moving up the ladder there. But how did you create that type of environment with that leadership within our industry? Well, I mean, we were early to the game. And so we were a fun, exciting organization. We paid extremely well. 
Um, we were very energetic, very sales driven, very service driven. So it attracted great leaders. And you know, Larry came out of the family fitness environment and Larry became a divisional president. Larry was amazing. Larry's just really an inspirational person. I've always thought Larry should be a guy out there in front of you know 10,000 people talking about how to you know motivate yourself and, and make a ton of money as a speaker. I, I thought he's just one of the greatest motivators of all time. Should have been probably the you know best football coach in the country making 10 million a year getting kids ready to play. But, but Larry had an amazing talent. And so, you know, at some point he comes and says, look, I want to go do my own thing. And you, you bless him and say, go do it. You know, just try not to do it in our backyard. So he picked up, went out to Tennessee. He's still there. Uh, we still talk often and, and he built the rush. And I know you were with him and Jeff and a lot of the guys were out there with him and he added into Tennessee, North Carolina, built an amazing business. And so Larry's, you know, one of the greats. Uh, and then you mentioned a bunch of the others, you know, from the, the Jim Rollies of the world, uh, Curtis Harmon down there. Steve Block and I have been working together since the early days. The very first acquisition I ever did in the fitness industry were gyms that Steve Block was running. So Steve and I have known each other forever. But you find talented people, you give them the rope to run, you don't micromanage them, you pay them extremely well, you motivate them well, you give them shares in the company, and we all get in the boat and row together. And, you know, we had just amazing people show up, the Craig Pepinonas, the Brian Bomas, I can go on and on, Eric Jenkins of the world. And and we had just a, a tremendously fun time. And then you watch where everybody goes. You know, Jeff Harmon now is, is down in Mexico with Ray Wilson still. And they're down there having a ton of fun building boxes and kicking ass. And so it's fun to see. And then, you know, we got to expansion and we got the Eric Levines in, in Asia. And we went into Europe and had fun over there. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. But, you know, great leaders rise to the top. And once they get there, if you motivate them well and pay them well and, and uh, you know, take care of them, then they're, they're just gonna have a blast with you and you just keep going. That's amazing, that's amazing. Hey, now, now Mark, what, if you don't mind sharing with us, what would you say that, that you look for with an eye of talent? And of course, you know, I'm talking to Mark today, Never mind, you know, when we were talking about 20, 25, 30 years ago when you were starting, but what would you even look for nowadays in, let's say, um, fitness leadership and, you know, a, a person who's going to be able to say, I'm going to take this project and take it to the next level? Yeah, if you're talking the fitness division, I mean, obviously, it's, you know, great education, background, knowledge, experience, and then charisma, you know, having great charisma, a uh, very ethical person, a great leader, somebody who really wants to roll up their sleeves and get it done. So I'm, I'm more of a field general. I don't, I don't like a lot of people that sit in the office and are the generals from up top. I like people that roll up their sleeves and get, get down, get dirty, get involved with everybody. But, you know, charisma plays a great role. You want to be able to have a leader you want to follow. Uh, somebody who's intelligent, honest, hardworking, and puts the effort in. But somebody's also got a, some experience and track record to get there, good education. But there's a lot of little things. And, you know, you just kind of have to feel it out. But you want somebody who wants to learn and somebody who's eager and somebody who's hungry. And, uh, you know, if you put them in the right situation and give them the right opportunity, they're going to crush it. Love it. Love it. Now, how about this? You know, I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the relationship that formed there in the early to mid 90s. But when did you make the decision and say, you know, we've got this great thing going with 24 hour fitness, but you wanted to bring in something that, you know, weren't able to service your members at that time, but really more of that nutrition component. And then that led down the road to bringing in Neil Spruce and, and Apex, you know, and you know, I would say developed a very good relationship and really took your whole training team and results and everything to that next level. But where, where did that come from, Mark, if you don't mind me asking? No, good question. So when we started building the, you know, the gyms and started growing and, and developing, we started to realize that personal training was an area that people were really interested in. We used to just let trainers come in and they would pay us maybe a fee and they would train our members and they would keep the money. But then we started realizing that they weren't representing our brand all the time. They weren't necessarily highly qualified and well-educated. So we, we went and hired a guy named Chuck Fields and brought Chuck in to begin our training program. And we developed our own training program. There wasn't anything really on the street you could buy. NASM really didn't exist just yet. And so we, we developed our own training program early on. We certified and trained our staff. And then we built a nice, really strong personal training division. But what we started to realize was that, you know, if people weren't eating right, no matter how hard they trained, they just weren't getting results. And we we're trying to solve for that fact. You know, we, we would see people that, you know, were training their asses off, but they go eat three McDonald's burgers. And you'd be like, you know, you aren't, you aren't really doing the right thing. So we ended up acquiring um, gyms in Hawaii from Ode Hogan. He had some gyms out there. We bought them. 
And Ode introduced us to Neil. He's, he said, look, I have this amazing nutrition program here called Apex, and you should talk to Neil. So we went and met Neil and we spent time with Neil. And you know, Neil's the you know, most amazing human being. And so Neil started to explain what his philosophy was and then started talking about Apex. And then we started talking about eventually NASM. And so we made a decision that you know, we need to have Neil. And so we made Neil an offer versus just you know, renting from him. We wanted to acquire and bring him in as a partner. So we acquired Neil's company, we brought him in house and then we let him sell to the outside too if he wanted to. But we drove nutrition as part of a program to our member base because we know that if you were able to be educated around how to think about buying your products, you know, looking at labels, how to prepare your meals better, how to ingest nutraceuticals, et cetera, we could really build a program that allowed you to achieve and, and excel. And the next thing you know, that's what ends up starting to happen. And Neil became probably the big differentiator for who we were and what we did because we could, could teach our members and have loyalty and, and greater retention through our personal training and nutrition divisions. That's how we touched our members and we kept them long-term. So I always felt nutrition was the most important aspect of the gyms. We gave it away for free. We didn't charge for it. It was, it was online. You could have all that. It wasn't something we tried to necessarily make money, but then we sold the supplements and the supplements became very profitable for us. And, and obviously there's a good margin in that, but we made sure they were of high quality because Neil always had them NSF certified. And then we made sure that, you know, we gave the basics to everybody. So they had that available and it really became part of our DNA. And I think it was one of the big differentiators for us as a company that made us successful. And anyone who doesn't have a nutrition program today, anyone who doesn't have nutraceuticals or isn't working with dot fit just doesn't understand their business. So I walk in a lot of gyms, I don't see anything. I kind of scratch my head like, well, what are you really doing here? You're just renting your space for people to push some weights around. You're not educating, teaching and training them. So to me, dot fits, you know, the hub um, and everything else is a spoke that comes off of that wheel. Mm. And, and obviously we really appreciate that. And, you know, and, and with that, of course, is, is why, you know, we're, we're lucky enough. And I, I don't mind saying that whatsoever that, uh, you know, you're a, a partner with us and what we get to do. And we're always very appreciative of all the other doors that you wind up being able to open and, you know, but it, it still goes back to if it didn't work, why would we advocate it? You know I mean? You've seen it work amazingly. And then we're just talking about how we can duplicate that. Right. So with that, Mark, you know, sometimes all good things have to come to an end. And I realized, you know, there was a time with, you know, the, the sale of 24 hour fitness, but then of course you're like, I'm not done yet. You know what I mean? Just beginning. So from what I understand, you know, you along with Jim Rowley and Mike Feeney, uh, start up new evolutions ventures. And then obviously we have, uh, uh, quite a few brands that might be branched off from there. Uh, would you mind sharing with us a little bit of some of the major brands that we work with here within the, the NEV umbrella? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you know, NEV's brands um, really that are in the U.S. Is, is UFC Gym. So Adam Sedlak kind of runs that. He's an amazing leader, along with uh, Sean Pence, Mike Palanis. You got, you know, Shauna Winters down there, Mike Apple, a bunch of our old crew that are kicking ass and having fun. Uh, John Hickey's out running in, in Florida and places, so it's fun to watch some of the guys we've worked with for years get involved with us. Um, so we've got that company that's performing really well. It's a global company. We're approaching 40 countries around the world now. And they're doing good work. And then uh, Jim and I and Mike invested in Crunch and we launched Crunch. Uh, originally, it was uh, with Angela Gordon to kind of turn around the platform. We then uh, were able to convince Ben Midgley to join us with Craig Pepidona, who both were with us at 24. You know, Craig's one of my good friends. Ben's a great friend. So we brought a franchise concept and bolted that into Crunch. And Ben and has done an amazing job growing the franchise business, as has Craig. They've, they've kicked ass. Keith Wirtz has been running the main business for us. And we've got a bunch of guys involved there. Um, Derek Gallup was at Crunch. He's at UFC Gym. He's helped us and, and been integral. And so then we, we've taken the business forward there and grown it. And then we've done some stuff overseas. You know, we've, we've taken the Crunch brand down to Australia and other countries. Um, we've got a brand in Mexico that we work with that Chris Dedicek runs called Energy. Um, we've got some other projects as well. So that's kind of what Nev's tentacles are, are now. We've had some other businesses we've grown, like Yoga Works, we've sold. Uh, we partnered with Alex Wiesner down in Chile. We built Energy Fitness in Chile, and then we sold that. Alex is still growing it, building a monster company there, and, and he's a really good friend. So we've kind of been in and out of a few businesses, but the main focus right now is probably UFC Gym from Nev's standpoint, and then some of the stuff overseas. 
And then separately, you know, we've got the crunch business that, that Jim Rowley is the CEO and he runs. And then Mike Feeney, who's been kind of our partner, been with me forever and ever, who is the master of all things that comes to equipment design, layout, equipment purchasing, construction. He handles all that, which he's very passionate about. And I think most people know he's one of the best, if not the best in the world at it. So, you know, we've just got great people around us. Um, you know, I can go on and on and talk about our people. Tony Bakos, who handles legal for us, has been with me. He's my chief general counsel at 2-4 and been with us at NEV and other places. So you know, a lot of it's just building these relationships and, and staying close with people, having fun and enjoying the experience. That's amazing. Now, now there's there's something that I was able to see you doing a keynote uh, speech one time. It was, I believe it was at a UFC gym convention. And one of the things that I admire most about you is is obviously of all this background and this this crazy success, but to to see you stand in front of all these franchisees and you basically acknowledged, look, if I don't know something, I'm going to find the best person to do it. And and at the time, it was great because you were going, we need this cool concept, which is kind of one of the new launches with uh, the class model under UFC gym brand. And you go, look, you go, if I want cool, I need Brita. Britta's cool and Britta will figure this out. And basically, you know, you had, you know, Britta, who is an amazing team member, but I, I know she has a sports agent background, but bringing her into the fold, uh, would you mind to speak a little bit about that though, Mark? Well, yeah, so we were building a new concept that was a class-based small box around boxing bags, MMA. And, you know, you need somebody who kind of is a millennial, someone who's young, fit, who actually lives in that space every day that gets it. And, you know, Britta Phelps was inside our organization. So I kind of tabbed her. I thought she'd be the right one. And she did an amazing job yeah. taking this concept and bringing it to life and handing it off to the team. And so, you know, Britta was just a young, super bright person that, you know, sometimes you pick out of the crowd and say, go. And she kicked ass and did an amazing job. We're obviously still working together and, and I have a lot of fun with her um, and you learn. So to me, it's, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if I'm going to do something, I want to find people that really live in that space and understand. I can give my 10 cents worth, but, you know, it's not always going to be 100% spot on. So we found somebody I thought that really spoke to the market and she did a great job launching it and had a lot of fun. All right. But see, I like, like for somebody like me, I really admire that, though, out of a leader. And, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say, you know, Neil is very similar with that, too, where you know what you do really well, but you also know, hey, if somebody else can help or they have this kind of input, let's listen to them and go, you know, versus some of the different, you know, uh, motivational books we've read about whether it was Ford or whoever else that just couldn't deal with somebody else coming up with an idea, like it had to be there. So for somebody in my position, I really, uh, it, it makes me very excited to see somebody like that be so open-minded, you know, and, and I, I don't know if you know this, but this, this is another thing that just made me really um, appreciate and respect you again, besides the accomplishments, but it was actually at the NASM Optima conference when you were again, a keynote speaker. And for those listening, I mean, you can tell Mark, Mark is a pretty busy person and, and you didn't even touch on in this conversation, all the things internationally that you were doing almost by yourself without the other groups. I mean, you have a lot of things going on. And one of the things I loved was this, this audience is full of personal trainers. I mean, there might've been a few owners, but it's almost all personal trainers. Some are in clubs, some are not. And, and you were speaking about people that were looking to start their own, let's say studio. And you were warning them about some of the pitfalls about getting involved with leases and so forth. And basically you said, look, if you have questions, just contact me. If you want me to look at your business model, I'm happy to. And Mark, we're not going to give away your email address in this conversation, but sure as heck, after you were done, I watched and there was a line of people to be able to speak to you. And I saw them out with their phones, getting information where they'd be able to contact you. And again, I, again, from somebody like me, I, I appreciate that a lot that it's like, you're like an in the trenches person to say, Hey, you know what I mean? Like we'll help out everybody we can. So again, bravo with you on, on, on how you act like that. And it's always, it's always something really cool, you know, um, for, for, for others like us. So I appreciate that, Rob. And I believe in paying it forward. And so, you know, we've all gone through the wars. You've gone through the wars, Neil, Mike Clark, myself, Jim Rowley, whoever you want to mention, the Mike Feeney's of the world, we, we all go through it. But if we can pass nuggets of information to others to let them bypass those years of, of, of learnings and just skip through that, why not? Why not help people and, and help them become more successful if possible? Awesome. Now, how about this? 
with with all the various brands that you've been involved with over the years, is there anything specific that that catches your eye that you either say, you know, maybe I want to create this or I want to get involved with this? What is there some kind of spark that you just think about and go, you know, yes to this, but maybe no to that? Yeah, good question. I mean, when you're younger, you see things and you're like so excited to get involved because you know, it's going to be an amazing opportunity for this company to grow. But then you start to realize it's around the leaders and their ability to execute and then time. And you're not going to put much time into that. You'll give some, but not enough. And you start to realize that, you know, in the early stages, it looks sexy, it looks scalable, it looks like it could be amazing, but it doesn't quite get there often. And so then you get older and you start to step back and you say, look, I'm not involved in the early stages very often. I'd prefer to wait till you're more successful and you've got a proven model. So you've gone from one to 20. Now you're going to hundred to 200. Okay. I'm that guy. I'm not the guy that's going to help you get one to two, one to five, one to 10, because you know, that may be where no matter what I tell you, you're not going to believe it, or you're going to believe that you're right. I'm wrong. And, and you may be right. You may not be, but a lot of it is just, you know, you sit back and wait a little bit. So today I don't look at as many early startups because they have to go prove themselves and once they prove themselves, then the leadership has to be able to prove to be able to navigate difficult times like we have right now to get through that. So I guess the long, long answer to your question is, is that you look for people that have the skills and abilities to grow a business and scale it or to recognize that once they hit a certain threshold, they need to step back and bring other people in who can. So that's kind of it. It's kind of like the, the working relationship. Can you really have someone listen and, and execute on ideas and concepts you know are right versus being stubborn and prove that you're wrong and have them hit walls over and over again. Interesting, very interesting, very good. So Mark, of course, I've got a personal question for you, uh, but I, I think it's a fun one. And uh, you know, I, I know that, uh, oop, kind of lost your camera there for a sec, Mark. Hopefully you're still on. Yeah, it looked like it faded for some reason. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I don't know why it just- uh... Technology, right? There it goes. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So what I was going to say is, you know, I, I know with, with everything it, there, there's always, always family and um, being, being able to be around you as well. Uh, I know that right now you've got some real exciting times with your kids with sports. So I know, you know, I think it's a uh, defensive end kind of, I see, I mean, looks like a monster. I see your daughter with these amazing basketball shots. How, how are the kids doing with their athletic careers? I no, appreciate that. So my <clears throat> oldest son is 18. He graduated uh, high school early in June so he could go play football at SMU. So he's got a full ride out there. Uh, they've got him scaled to be a linebacker. He's like 6'4", 220, young kid growing and super athletic. I mean, he's kind of a really, really a freak athlete like my wife. Well, so, and he looks like yeah. a man amongst boys on those uh, videos that I get to see. I mean, with him screaming around the end, I'm like, oh, the quarterback's about to get hit. Yeah, so. no, high, school, high school, he played defensive end and he was uh, he was just a beast. I think he was uh, first team all Northern California this year, one of the top kids in the state. And he had scholarships everywhere, but he really loved the business school at SMU. And he decided to go out there for education. They also have a top 20 football team. So <clears throat> they're loaded. So he, he went out early. He, he got into spring practice and then COVID hit. So he came home. He's heading back out. I think July 5th, they're going to have a football camp and get him back to school. Hopefully that's what they're scheduled to do right now and get ready to play hopefully in the fall. Um, so he's good. Um, my daughter will go into her senior year this fall. Um, she's a basketball kid. She has offers all over the country and, and uh, I'm not sure where she's going to go, but uh, it'll be amazing school no matter what. I, I think that she'll narrow it down here pretty soon and, and pick one and lock in. Uh, she's doing really well. Then we've got two more coming behind. I've got a, a 15 year old who is, he was about 260 pounds about two months ago. He's leaning out a little bit now, getting ready for the football season. He's just the biggest dude ever. Yeah. And then I got a, a little guy who just turned 12, who's probably the best athlete in the family. He is uh, amazing at every sport. I can't pick one. He can't be one of the top kids on. So you name it, he's playing it uh, full-time year round, whether it's flag football, baseball, basketball, track, put him in the pool. It doesn't matter. Put, put him out in lacrosse and the first day is the best kid out there. He just really well put together for his age, but we'll see, you know, as kids grow older, they kind of go in these peaks and valleys. But, you know, everybody asked me like, how the hell this happened? I said, well, my, my wife's a great athlete. So that a lot of them have her genes. 
but you know we've used neil spruce's nutrition program for everybody so all these kids are lean and mean and in great physical condition and then we've worked with mike clark on using all his programs he's developed at fusionetics and so all the all the kids have you know locked into the software mike developed to create you know flexibility and protect them from injury and develop their bodies so I always tell people, if you get on the Fusion X program, you get on the Dot Fit program, you take your kids from 10 years old and you grow them up, they're going to be pretty successful uh, without a doubt. They have the competitive spirits. Like I think last night it was midnight. I was getting ready to head upstairs and my 12 year old said, hey, dad, I want to I want a protein shake. So I went down and made him, you know, his favorite, you know, vanilla yogurt, milk, you know, strawberries, bananas and a big scoop of uh, Dot Fit. Yep. And, uh, you know, I brought it up to him and he drank that thing before bed. He's like, I'll be an inch, I'll be an inch taller and two pounds heavier when I wake up. So, but all the kids are, are kind of, they love the product. They get in behind it. They believe in it. And then uh, they love to compete, but they're great kids. And sport is just a byproduct of, of learning how to deal with teammates and how to basically get better at something and how hard work pays off in the end. But yeah, it's fun to watch and, and uh, help these kids, you know, live their dreams. That's kind of what we're all after as parents. And, and it's a riot because knowing Neil very well, as you do as well, of course, and he has such passion for our entire industry, but I, I would say his number one passion is youth fitness, you know, for how he was raised and he just loves the whole aspect, right? So I, I know like he, he treasures that. So it's really cool. And, and I have to say again, I, I got to throw this out there, Mark, but uh, for those, you know, that, that maybe don't know, my only interaction with your kids was actually at a crunch convention. And if you all can only imagine, you know, I, I am uh, representing Dot Fit. I've got a table full of bars for everybody to try and drinks and everything else. And people will just come over and I mean, they'll grab, you know, handfuls of bars, never even acknowledge me, walk off. Well, you know, all of a sudden, like somebody's just like, excuse me. And I, I look up, you know, and I don't know even know if you remember this, but it's you and your kids and you're like, could we grab a bar? Is that okay? You know, and here we are, you know, I mean, just saying it's, it's, it's awful nice that, you know, they learn from you. Right. And, you know, I, I have an 11 year old at home and, you know, that's my number one, you know, my wife and I, so it's, it, it's, it's really neat. So I got to tell you, I mean, they are super respectful and, uh, and it shows it's, it's, it's really great to see. No, I appreciate that. You know, I mean, try and raise them right and find their path and get them on, get them out there. But you know, they'll, they'll all go and excel like your kids will, everybody's will. And, you know, we'll see what the future holds here and, you know, to come through this kind of period of time, but, you know, there'll be a lot of fun for them, but my, my son's a great kid and my daughter, all of them are, they're, they're really balanced kids and they care. And, you know, we'll see as they turn into adults, what happens, you know, all yeah. we can do is get them, get them ready and send them off to school and see where it takes them. Right, right. Well, Mark, uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about this, but basically based upon what's going on right now, and I know like today, you know, we're starting to see more and more things starting to open. Um, so obviously today feels a lot different than two weeks ago and, and, and so forth. But, um, but please, you know, from, from, from your perspective, um, what, what might you have as maybe some words of just some guidance and maybe what we can look forward to just even in our industry dealing with what we've dealt with the last 60 days? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, depending on where you're coming from, whether you're a boutique, a small box or a little bit bigger box, but you know, ultimately each state's going at it a little bit differently than the counties in the states are sometimes doing it differently and the mayors are doing it differently and the city councils are doing it differently. So we're all trying to navigate whatever it is that we're being told on how to kind of operate our facilities there's probably 20 states now that are open and operating and more coming each day. Uh, California announced today that, you know, next few weeks, maybe they'll start to open, but you never know with Gavin, he may stretch us out. Hawaii announced today, I think uh, June 20, June 19th, I think it was. So they're about three weeks away. So hopefully by the end of June, most places are up and running other than a few states that are kind of outliers. But, you know, we've got to live with the new normal and, and to protect our members and our staff whether that's wearing masks, whether it's wearing gloves, spacing out our equipment, social distancing, maybe uh, limiting classes or just, you know, spacing out the classes to smaller groups and slowly bring everybody back so they feel confident about their experience. What we have seen is the gyms that have opened have, have pretty good workout traffic, generally close to 50% of normal right away and growing each week. And the sales have been fairly reasonable too. People are coming back and joining and wanting to enroll. We have seen internationally that China now is what we're hearing from our friends out there is they're approaching 80 to 85 percent 
workout traffic and sales have gone to equal to or greater than prior to shutdown. So they've rebounded very nicely. So I do think that we recognize that the only true vaccine in the world is exercise that we know today. And we play a big role there, both mentally and physically. I think getting out in community and looking at your mental capacity when it comes to fitness is a bigger thing than people pay attention to. I have a good friend that I've known forever, actually my first weightlifting partner when I was like 18 years old. And we've been friends ever since he lives in Atlanta and he's got diabetes. And he texts me and said like, I'm not going back to the gym. I'm diabetes, I'm kind of high risk. I gotta be careful. And I said, no, definitely take your time. Well, he texted me on the weekend and said he finally just broke down, had to go to the gym. He just couldn't stand anymore. He went in, he says it was clean. It was separated. I felt comfortable. I wore a mask. I saw all my old friends. It was the best day I've had in three months. He said, I was so happy. I'm going back tomorrow. So I think our gyms will perform well. Our small boutiques will perform well once we can get up to scale. I think people recognize that we are really an essential business. We're not the, the business should be in phase four, like Illinois has us, or phase three, like California. We should be phase one, like the president said, and some states have put us in the phase one. And those states have opened and we've really helped people feel better about themselves. So uh, I think stay positive, stay close to your landlords, work out whatever rent deals you need to work out, stay close to your staff and make sure they feel safe and comfortable when they come back and do the right things. Do the same thing you know, with your members and we'll get through this. We'll hopefully come back and, and by the fall, we'll kind of have a really good idea of what we're, we're facing. And I'm hoping this is behind us and we're back to the new normal. And hopefully this winter, we don't have, you know, this whole belief that it's going to be phase two and the second wave is going to come. I'm not sure that's really reality unless we're all crazy and, you know, we don't adhere to social distancing. But wear a mask, wash your hands often, 20 seconds with soap and warm water. Don't touch your face, your nose, your, your mouth, your eyes. Keep your hands down now forever and ever. Don't touch your face at all. Clean yourself. Take a shower a couple of times a day if you need to. And then when you get out, be careful, social distancing and get back. And we all should be fine, right? We all should be in good shape. We all should be able to get to our gyms. And we've got plenty of, you know, solutions to wash machines down before and after. You should be very comfortable. It shouldn't be that difficult for us to navigate this. You know, this is what we've been doing for years. We, we dealt with SARS in Asia. I was on the ground when that happened with Steve Kleinfelter, who did an amazing job. I think he saved the fitness industry in Asia. He was on TV, on CNN every day. Steve was just awesome out there. Um, call Steve Kleinfeld, he'll tell you his play. Um, but I think that we'll we'll find a way to kind of get through this and uh, get back up and running and take our time to kind of get back to the new normal. And then once it's behind us, we'll we'll crush it because people now know with home exercise and everything else that they really need to stay lean. They need to keep their bodies, you know, with with a limited inflammation inside it. They need to eat right. They need to exercise right. They need to move more. They need to basically lose some weight, shake their body out. And you can do it at home. Fantastic. Do it. It's great. But there's nothing better than an experience in a community setting, like in your gym, your boutique gym, the park, whatever it might be. There's nothing better than taking a class where everybody competing against each other, sweating together, having fun, laughing. That, that's where we want to get back to. And it'll be, our industry will be greater than ever before. I love it. Great, great, great words. And, and everybody we've been dealing with uh, that has opened, I, honestly, we've had 99% just great feedback uh, from the members from, like you said, um, memberships. Memberships are, are booming. People aren't afraid. Uh, you know, and like you said, if somebody is, then to each their own. And, and to your point, though, right, is there any cleaner place outside of the hospital that's going to be any of our gyms and studios and boutiques, you know, when you compare that to grocery stores and Home Depots and Lowe's and those places, I mean, there, there's people cleaning all the time, you know, so yeah, fingers no, we'll, crossed, we'll, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll be way better than everybody else because, you know, that's what we do and we're required to do it. But, you know, you look at what we have in the gyms versus places I go out to, whether I was in a Costco I was in a Whole Foods the other day, a Safeway. I mean, they're packed with people and touching thousands of things. There's no solutions out there to spray things down. So, you know, you got to do that. And, and you got to be smart with the way that you, you know, you eat and, and you take your nutraceuticals. I mean, everybody's talking now that vitamin D is like a mandate, you know, because it's protection against COVID. And one of the things they're seeing is people that are weak in vitamin D, they're not getting enough sunlight, they're not taking an ingestible, are, are suffering. So, if you're not on vitamin D, everybody needs to take a vitamin D pill every single day. That's yeah. like number one. Yeah. And then everything else we're looking at, you know, that's come out in the reports. Yeah, there's yours. So 
you got to have it. I know Neil's got it in stock. Some some companies don't oh, even yeah. have it, so you guys can produce yeah. it. But you got to have that in your diet every day, a multivitamin every day, and get the inflammation out. Get your get your ass working out, sweating, having fun, laughing, riding a bike, walking up hills, whatever it needs to do until you get back in the gym and do the same thing there. And and support your gym, support your nutrition company. Buy a lot of dot fit product, put it in your cupboards and ingest it, eat it, buy more, help people. That's what we're all about. Help people get the word out. Love it. Love it. Uh, Mark, um, are the rumors true? Are we looking at Mastroff for governor coming up sometime soon? I know, you got to ask my wife. She just walked in. Here. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, I don't know if I want to be first lady. I know. Like, yeah. he's, always, he's always giving me a hard time, but uh, you know, I, I would say that, you know, people have asked me to run for political office for 20 years. and I've just kind of been too damn busy, but I'm getting to a point where I might have a little bit of time and I'm open minded to it. So we'll, we'll keep talking. It, it's not till 2022, but, you know, you know, Gavin's doing the best job that he possibly can. But I think I would be leading a little bit more out front than basically delegating to my counties. I'd be telling the state what to do. And I like the way that places like Texas have run in Florida and Arizona where the governors have said, we're going to go, we're going to figure this thing out and we're going to make it happen. Everybody's like, they're stupid. They're terrible. They're going to kill everybody. And you listen to that and they've opened it up and nothing's happened. The, the actual cases are going down. The virus doesn't seem to be spreading hard. The death numbers coming down and the warm weather and the intelligence of people trusting the people of those states to wear masks, the social distance has seemed to play out pretty well so far knock on wood. I think California, once we trust everybody here, I think we'll see the same thing. This is a really super intelligent state. I'm just shocked that we're not leading the country we're following, which I've never ever seen California follow. We've always been a leadership state. So when you come to political stuff, I'm not a big politician, but if we need leadership, there's no different than when, when Arnold Schwarzenegger ran for governor. He's like, I, someone's got to get in here and make a difference. And I spent a lot of time with him and, and campaigned with him and talk to him and, and I know that he'd have my back if I wanted to run, but uh, ultimately we'll see. No guarantees, but it's definitely something that I'm looking at. Very exciting, very exciting. Well, I, hey, you, you know you've got a lot of votes coming from all of us, so I appreciate that. great. Well, appreciate Mark, I, I can't thank you enough for your time today. It's always great being able to speak with you and, and you know, um, just gather again nuggets of, of wisdom everywhere along the line that you're able to drop them on us. But thank you so much, really, I really appreciate it. You bet, Rob. Stay healthy, stay happy. Give my love to the family and uh, kick Neil in the ass when you see him. Thank you so much. Take care, okay? Take care. Bye, Bye now. Bye.